Hi guys, Melvin here from Neuron Digital. In this short video tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through how to set up the admin page of the Ultimate Recipe app template. I'm going to be showing you how to customize it and change certain things from it, and also how to set up the SQL database and ultimately how to use the admin page to create the recipes for your recipe app. Okay, so let's start setting up the admin page. You need to access this server-side code in the package you just downloaded. So open it, you have all these files here. I'm going to use FileZilla to upload them to my server. So in this tutorial, I'm using Byte host host so that it will be free. If you have your own hosting already, feel free to use your own. I'm going to use this since it's free and you can follow me in the tutorial. So let's go ahead and create a domain with them. I'm going to name it recipe app temp. Password, I'm going to use my easy password. Email address. For business English Kaptaka six and register. I just activated my account here, it's loading. And I have my account details in here. I'm just going to copy the username and access the panel. My password is my, my easy password again. And login. There we are. So let's see what the FTP details are from FTP accounts. Okay, so we have our FTP details in here. Let's just copy the FTP username and paste it in FileZilla. Copy the host and paste it once again in FileZilla. The password is my easy password. The one I used for the panel again. Quick connect. Okay, so we have connected successfully to the server FTP. I'm going to open this file here, delete these two files, yes. And I'm going to copy all the contents of server size code onto the server. Make sure that you don't forget the HDA access because it's very important since it will redirect all the traffic to this folder to the index.php. So while that's loading, let's go ahead and start the SQL database. So I'm going to home once again, and I'm going to my SQL databases, and I'm going to create a new database call it recipe recipe app create database and it's created there it is i have the res the database details in here so let's go ahead and copy them and we should put these in so open config dot in here i'm going to open it in sublime text so I have sublime text here and we have the database username, password, host and database name in here. So let's copy one by one and put it in here. So the database name, copy and paste it in database name in here. Let's copy the username and put it in here.
the SQL hostname and put it in here. And the password is once again my easy password. That's it. And we'll get back to this later. So just save this, open FileZilla once again, and it's still uploading apparently here. Okay, so until it uploads, let's go back to the SQL. Always use this action. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the SQL database. Open the PHP my admin here. And we need to import the SQL database. So go to choose file, SQL database, and open that. Click on go. And the import has been successful. Go to structure to see that everything is working. Okay. So we should have one user already in there. So we have it here. The username is admin and the password is hashed, but it's P-A-S-S -S for pass. So let's go back to the FileZilla to check if it's done. And it's still uploading, apparently. Okay, so the upload is now done. Right click on uploads, file permissions, and make sure you have the right option here for the owner marked since the admin page needs to upload the images onto this folder here. So, okay, that's done. Go to the panel once again and open the admin page. And we have the admin page here successfully working. So, put in the default username, which is admin, and the password, which is PASS, and click sign in. And that's it, we have successfully signed in into the admin page, we have the dashboard here, we have the empty recipes, the categories, etc, etc. So let's copy this here and put it directly into Android Studio. So put it into the server URL. Make sure you have this here because else it won't work. Minimize that and let's go ahead and add a recipe. So click on new recipe. I'm going to create a pasta recipe. So click on browse and select an image. Okay, I'm selecting a burger image because this is the smallest one I have. Since we have a uh, free hosting, the memory is not that large. So let's choose a small image and play it safe. Test. And I'm going to put in the ingredients, salt. And a great feature of this admin page is that it has variable servings so if I put in a brackets here and put in for example two and let's say tablespoons it will automatically multiply this two here by the number of servings that the user chooses so if he chooses to serve four people it will multiply four by two which will come eight tablespoons on his app so let's add that we have no categories, so let's click Save Changes. And there it is, it has successfully uploaded. So if you go to your app now, you should see this burger here on your app. So let's go to the Categories section, New Category, and I'm going to put in Burgers now. Browse and select the Burgers image. Open once again and Save Changes. And there it is as well, it's working. Let's go to info and here we can put in anything. So news. You can also put a YouTube video from here. And I'm going to click submit. And there it is. It's in the database successfully. You can also send push notifications. So you can Say hi, for example, and your message here. And this, of course, will not work for now since we still need to add the Firebase API. So let's go to the Firebase console. 
So this is my Firebase console. And go to settings and project settings, cloud messaging, and we have our server key here. So it's this, the long one here. I'm not showing it here for obvious reasons. So copy it and I'm going to paste it here and save. Open this once again and drag and drop config.ini to the server. Okay, it's uploaded successfully. So one last thing to activate the Firebase plugin, go to the settings of your console and download the Google Services Johnson file here and open Android Studio, go to project files and you need to replace this file here or just paste the Johnson file in app here so that it replaces this one here. This is so that your app will be configured to link to your Firebase page. So now you can go to your app and send your message and it should send successfully to your phone with the app installed. So now that that's working, let's go to settings. From here, you can change the username from the default admin. So feel free to change it from here. And if you go to the dashboard here, you could obviously see, see the, the views that you had, the shared recipes that you had, and the recipes that had been favored from the user's app. So that's all for the admin app page. Thanks for watching.